Hello, everyone. We had some technical difficulties, unfortunately, this morning at the cemetery during the service for Guy Croft. And we know a number of you were watching online and had the broadcast interrupted. So I have come here to the synagogue, Sherrod's Edic, to record so that we may post online the eulogy I delivered earlier, along with some comments provided to me by the family. We have their permission to put this up. And we thank everyone for their patience, for watching this, for letting us know, and we sincerely apologize for the technical problems. We are here today to honor Guy Joseph Croft, Yosef ben Bitzalel Vechana, the son of Charles and Heloise Croft, of blessed memory, Zichronam Livracha. We are here to celebrate Guy's life, to give recognition to all he accomplished, his legacy, to pay him the ultimate respect in Jewish tradition of accompanying him to his final resting place. And we are here, though it is truly difficult, to say goodbye. Young or old, those who depart this life never see enough of the world. They never complete their task, never cherish their loved ones enough. After all, as it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, the eye never has its fill of seeing. How they, our loved ones, yearned for just a little more time. And how we yearned to have them close to us for just one more challenge in our lives, one more joy, or one more precious moment together. At the same time, Jewish tradition teaches, death is better than a life of pain and eternal rest is better than constant sickness. Guy Croft passed away Wednesday evening, the 22nd day in the Hebrew month of Nisan. He was 85. He will be lovingly missed by his beloved wife of 64 years, Hester. His children, Jonathan and Kara, Debbie and Morley, David and Ellen, Sarah and Jeff. His grandchildren, Daniel, Emily, Charlie, Sally, Sam, Julia, Adam, Ben, Matthew, and Joel. His brother, Richard, and sister-in-law, Helene. Nieces and nephews and many friends, as well as a lifetime of acquaintances and colleagues, many of whom Guy made feel like dear friends even after just one meeting. Guy Croft was born on May 27, 1934, in Winnipeg. His father, Charles, was an immigrant from Russia who became successful in the grain trade. His mother, Heloise's family, the Cones, were already well established in the community. She was born here. Guy was a South Ender, a River Heights kid who grew up on Ash Street went to Queenston School, Robert H. Smith and Kelvin, and then the University of Manitoba, where he got a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Economics, and then went on to U of M Law School. He married his childhood sweetheart, Hester Israels, on June 10, 1956, right here at Sherrod's Attic. They'd known each other since they were 13. She lived just a few streets away on Queenston. Their parents, were friendly. They hung out on their bikes as teenagers. And because they were the same age and the same grade, went to the same schools, even graduated arts together before they were married. Then they built a life and a family together, their greatest accomplishment. Four kids, 10 grandkids, digging their deep Winnipeg roots even deeper. As many of you, if not all of you, know, Guy Croft was a judge. After an impressive 20-year legal career as an associate and later a partner at Thompson Dorfman Sweatman, by the way, Guy was proud to say he was the first member of Winnipeg's Jewish community to be invited, when D.A. Thompson invited him, to join one of the old-line establishment law firms in Manitoba. 
1955 as a student. Anyway, after 20 years as a lawyer, Guy was appointed to the Court of Queen's Bench in 1979, holding that position until 1993 when he moved up to the Manitoba Court of Appeal, where he served until his retirement in 2007. In Jewish law, there's a lot written about judges, including a list of the seven fundamental qualities every judge must possess. Wisdom, humility, fear of God, disdain of ill-gotten gain, love of truth, love of people, and a good reputation. Adding to that, we are told a judge must have a good eye, a humble soul, must be pleasant in company and speak kindly to people. He must be very strict with himself and conquer lustful impulses. He must have a courageous heart to save the oppressed from the oppressor's hate, cruelty, and persecution, and to eschew wrong and injustice. These qualities not only make a great judge, but a great leader. Someone others in the community can look up to, can be inspired by, and can hope to emulate in their own lives. These qualities also just happen to be the characteristics exemplified and embodied by Guy Croft, not only in his professional life, but in every aspect of his life, and from a very early age. From family and friends to community service to the bench, Guy Croft was intelligent and focused strong, calm, and steady. A great listener, he often preferred to be quiet, to take it all in. He wasn't showy or flashy, not one to need the spotlight to highlight himself, showcase, or brag. But still, he was a rock, especially for his family. Supportive, dependable, always there. The kind of father, or friend, or even judge, who always told you the truth. Maybe not necessarily what you wanted to hear, but what you needed to hear. Like his parents, Charles and Heloise, Guy Croft led by example. He wasn't inclined to lecture. He didn't have to tell you how to act. He showed you how to act by living it. Fair and trustworthy, his reputation on the bench especially preceded him. Lawyers were never afraid to appear before him. They knew they'd be greeted with politeness, courtesy, and fairness. Also, Guy was often the guy at work or among friends and family whom others confided in. He was just so easy to trust and to go to in times of need or crisis. People knew they could count on him. He had a special bond with people. Guy was generous, he was social, and he was funny. He was the sort of guy you automatically liked. He drew you in with his smile, with his amazing ability to remember when the two of you last talked or what you last talked about, or even if he was just meeting you for the first time. As one friend so eloquently and lovingly said in a message to the family earlier this week, it was impossible for anyone to meet Guy for the first time and not feel they had a friend. Impossible not to feel close to a man like that. Guy Croft was happy with what he had. He appreciated everything he had in life, no regrets, truly a glass half full type of person. He loved his family deeply. He cared passionately about his work but also delighted in other people's successes. He was truly content, truly calm and steady. His happy place was the lake, Falcon Lake, and all the time he got to spend there with family. He also had a soft spot for Camp Stevens and wonderful memories from summers there as a camper, counselor, and staff person through childhood and teenage years. His connection to Camp Stevens actually came about through the YMCA. 
The YMCA is where Guy would swim as part of his rehab, recovering from polio, which he had as a child. He'd swim at the Y. From there, he was introduced to Camp Stevens and the rest is history. A history he wasn't necessarily able to pass on to his kids. A bit of a family joke there. To say Guy had a passion for the Jewish community would actually be a bit of an understatement. In my meeting the other day with the family, Hester called Guy Jewish to the bone. And that truth is evident from the impressive list of Jewish organizations with which he got involved over the course of his life as a volunteer. A founding member of the Canada-Israel Committee during the days of the Yom Kippur War. An officer on the board of the Jewish Child and Family Services. Nearly 20 years with the executive of the Winnipeg Jewish Community Council, which is now the Federation, including a stint as president. Vice President of the Canadian Jewish Congress. President of the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba. Vice President of the Canadian Council of Jewish Federations. The list is actually kind of ridiculous. It's so impressive. It's no surprise he was a one-time Negev Gala honoree for the JNF and a recipient of the prestigious Saul Caney Award in 2003. But it wasn't just the Jewish community. Guy loved politics and giving back and people. You can add to his list President of the Manitoba Division of the Red Cross, President of the Canadian Club of Winnipeg, an active participant before he was a judge in both local and national politics, Board of Directors of the Winnipeg Foundation, time spent on the Federal Electoral Boundaries Commission, as well as a number of pursuits for lawyers and judges, from the Bar Admission Course to the Law Society of Manitoba to serving as president of the Canadian Judges Conference. And if you go back to his university days, president, senior stick of the Faculty of Arts, chairman of university debating, UMSU rep for the Faculty of Law, several positions with the Manitoba newspaper, and president of the Sigma Alpha Mu fraternity. Let's just put it mildly. Guy Croft was involved. But for Guy, it always circled back to his family, to Hester, to his children, and to his grandchildren. I'm honored that the family has provided me with some thoughts, some words that I can share now on their behalf. First, let me read remarks provided to me by the grandchildren. Jonathan and Kara's children, Daniel and Emily, Debbie and Morley's children, Charlie and Sally, David and Ellen's children, Julia, Sam and Adam, and Sarah and Jeff's children, Ben, Matthew and Joel. It's impossible to capture the true impact that our Papa had on our lives and what he meant to us. We appreciate that we were an important part of his life and he was an amazing part of our lives. It gave us a lot of pleasure to know how proud he was of each of us. His love for us showed and his interest in our lives and the time he took to really know each of us. We remember the Shabbats spent at Amma and Papa's house very well. Together, Amma and Papa created a beautiful family among which we felt completely at home. Upon arriving, we would all make our way downstairs to Papa's office. For a few hours every Friday night, that was our spot. Knowing that it belonged to Papa made us feel safe and welcome there, week after week. It was something we all looked forward to. One of our favorite things to do was to throw rocks off the balcony to try and hit the river. Even when Papa would come to us and make us stop throwing rocks, he never lost his temper. He stayed calm but firm, making sure we didn't get up to too much trouble. We remember how at Falcon Lake, Papa seemed to be at his best. Each one of us has a memory of watching Papa stand on the edge of the dock before diving in. It would seem like hours before he finally came up for air. Papa would take us on the best boat rides, whether it was to Philoma or to the Echo Place. Sometimes he would let us drive under his careful supervision, and always he would have a great big smile on his face. 
We were happiest when we grandchildren were with each other, and that is because of Papa. Together with Ama, he created a space we could not find anywhere else in the world, a place of family and togetherness. Family was so important to Papa, and it is because of him that all of us are as close as we are. Whenever we were all able to see each other, Papa was there, either at the head of the table or sitting in his brown chair at the lake. His presence became synonymous with the idea of family, and for the longest time, family gatherings were unimaginable without him at the head. Later in life, Papa still insisted on being the reliably strong and happy man we knew him to be. When we visited him, when he still lived at home, he would always try to be there to greet us as soon as we came through the door, despite his dizziness. When we visited him in the Simpkins Center, Papa would more often than not have a smile that lit up the room for us. He would push through whatever pain he was in to show us that he was there and that he cared. It meant the world to us. These are only some of the happy memories we have of Papa. Although he may be gone, Papa will live on. Not just through the many memories we have of him, but through each of us. Papa was the ultimate role model. He was a kind, honest, compassionate, and upstanding man. By living as he did and following his example, we continue to carry his memory and will hopefully pass his gifts to future generations of our family. Earlier, and even just there, we spoke of Guy Croft's ability to guide and lead as a living example. This now comes from Debbie on behalf of the kids. One of the most powerful lessons I learned from my dad's example is about love, the importance of love, that there are so many kinds of love. He demonstrated his love for his parents by spending time, hanging out, helping them, sharing interests, family dinners, football games, travel, watching sports and politics on TV, Shabbats, all the Jewish holidays, all the simchas. He loved his younger brother, Richard. We saw the importance of this relationship daily, multiple phone calls, visits, sharing interests, laughing, debating, sharing accomplishments, celebrating. My dad was never jealous or competitive. He was proud. My dad loved hanging out and being with Richard. They traveled in the same friendship circles. We had family Shabbats and Seders all of the holidays. They shared their love of Falcon Lake. The first cottage was a shared venture. Our families commingled all summer long for decades. In fact, we still do. Now it's in separate neighboring cottages. Now the younger generations enjoy hanging out too. For many of us still, our happy place is Falcon Lake. This was my dad's intention when he first bought the cottage. Thank you, Dad. As Guy's children, we know he loved us. He told us and showed us in a million ways every day. He worked hard to provide for us. He listened to us. He met our friends. He cared about our interests. He celebrated our successes and supported us in our mistakes. He treated us fairly and respected our individuality. He shared his work challenges and accomplishments with us too. He gave so much of his personal time to his community, but he always made time for us. And when we were all together, we had fun. We played and laughed. His idea of family fun was often outdoors. Cross-country skiing, tobogganing, walking, hiking, swimming, boat rides, playing tennis. He and Mum took us on amazing family trips to incredible places. Europe, Israel, across Canada, Florida, Jamaica. He taught us by example how to treat a spouse and the key to a healthy, strong marriage. He adored my mum. He tended to her needs and could anticipate her moods. He respected my mum and encouraged her interests and independence. He celebrated her accomplishments and admired her intelligence. They spent time together and enjoyed that time. They loved traveling together. When they had conversations, he would challenge my mom's opinions and ideas, but always listened for understanding. When they were problem solving, they always came to a united 
mutual decision. I want to thank the grandkids and as well as Debbie on behalf of all of the kids for providing these words, these beautiful, touching words of tribute and eulogy for Guy. In conclusion, let me say, our rabbis taught that there are three crowns, the crown of Torah, the crown of priesthood, and the crown of royalty. But they emphasized that the crown of a good name excels them all. Wealth, health, even life passes away, but a good name lives forever. We often say at funerals, the chance we have to rob death of the ultimate victory is to live our lives, so that when death does come, it takes us from a world, one corner of which is just a little bit better because we were there. Definitely for this family, but also for the entire Winnipeg Jewish community, our little corner of the world was certainly made better by the fact Guy Croft was in it. How truly lucky we all are to have had a legend in our midst, a legend we celebrate and honor today. To the family we say, Hamakom Yenachem Erchem Betok Sha'ar of Elate Sion Virushalayim. May you be comforted and consoled. May God comfort and console you among all those who mourn and all those who have ever been in mourning in our community.